One of the questions I often get asked is about how we use NLP in coaching. Coaching is not a new thing. The idea of coaching in business has been around for a long, long time. And I think in, in the early days, coaching was probably quite close to counselling in terms of listening and providing a bit of feedback, being a sounding board and so on. But coaching has moved on a lot over the years since it was first introduced into the business world. And I think that one of the things that NLP can really offer that's of most value in those sorts of situations where coaching is the best solution is that NLP techniques deliver actual behavioural change. Now, changing in behaviour is usually the goal of all kinds of development programmes, whether they're workshop-based, they're training programmes, one-on-one coaching, or whatever the medium. Actually getting somebody to change their behaviour is usually the ultimate goal. Now, if you think about it, you've probably attended training programmes where you learnt some interesting information, you saw some models, you discussed the implications, you thought about different ways of doing things. And if you're honest about it, you probably didn't change a great deal in the way that you do things. I've been there too. In my 20s, I had binders full of notes from courses that sat on shelves and didn't really make a vast difference to the way I went about things. Every now and again, I'd get something where I'd think, oh yeah, I can do that. But a lot of the time, it was just interesting information. And of course, the more senior you are in an organisation and the longer you've been around in an organisation, the harder it can be to actually change the way that you do something. Partly because there's that pressure that people put on you when you've been on a training programme and you come back and you do things differently and people say, ah, been on a course, have you? (laughs) Oh, we can see that you're trying out something different. And that can be a bit embarrassing and you don't want to be seen to be doing something different, especially if it doesn't work. Some people are concerned that if they suddenly change their approach, then people will think that they're, they're kind of admitting that what they were doing up until now wasn't the right thing to do. And so that holds them back from wanting to do something different. But assuming that it really is in your best interest to change what you're doing, then you need a way of making it happen. Now, if you've ever tried to consciously and deliberately change the way that you do something, something that you do regularly, you'll know how hard it can be. Something simple that a lot of people will have done would be something like um, uh, stopping biting their fingernails or uh, giving up smoking or not having sugar in your tea or something like that. Now, if that's something that you normally do every day, then remembering that you're going to do it differently can be quite hard. So the real value of working with NLP techniques is that we can kind of get inside those unconscious processes and change them so that the next time you're in the situation where you want to do something different, it just happens. Now, if you've not directly experienced NLP, you might find it hard to believe what I'm saying. A lot of people do. And that's fair enough, because if you haven't experienced it for yourself or you haven't seen it, then why would you just believe me? But it really is worth exploring because if your role is one where you need to keep moving with the times, you need to adapt what you're doing, change what you're doing, encourage your team to change what they're doing in order to keep up with what's going on in your organisation, then it's important that you understand how behavioural change really happens. And if you're someone whose role is about developing other people, it's equally important that you understand that. Now, when it comes to coaching... What we're also offering a person is not just the tools to change their behaviour, but also the privacy, the personal support, the confidentiality to deal with the things that are most difficult for them to address. Most people do have skeletons in the closet. Most people have things that they really would like to be different, but they're not that willing to talk about in a workshop full of their peers. So when you get the chance one-on-one to talk about the things that are really important and then to make a difference to that, to actually get some concrete behavioural change that will deliver different results, well, that's almost priceless. Or, as one of my clients said to me last week, it's kind of miraculous. 